Greetings growers from around the world, Jordan River here with more Growcast. Let's cultivate together. Today we have Wolfman back on the line. This is an awesome show that we have. We talk about companies. We talk about who owns who. We talk about how a lot of it traces back to corporations that you might recognize, like Monsanto. It's a very interesting episode. Wolfman really shines and shares his expertise. I know you're going to love it. Before we jump into it, though, MedicGrow.com. Need a medic. Code GROWCAST for 10% off, I believe. Big savings. Code GROWCAST. Grab yourself uh, one of their easy series, one of their smart series. They've got the Fold 8 720 watt for perfect for a 4x4. But then they've also got the Smart 8 for just a little bit more. And that's got the on-screen display. It's got all the fancy features. Riser Rich was talking about this. He's using this over at Seedco. Really interesting stuff to have that display right on there. They're foldable. They're bar style, high efficiency LED lights. Again, they're in the 700 watt range for the 4x4s. They've got larger sizes as well. I believe a couple smaller ones. All at metagrow.com. Code GROWCAST. Now, this is the thing. The price point is a little bit lower than a lot of the similar high-end bar style lights that perform similarly. So it's really interesting to get in on that, like Shane says, with the efficiency in the long run, you get a little bit of a lower price point. And I know you're going to love the Metagrows, especially if you go with that smart series with the on-screen display. Make sure to use code GROWCAST and always take a screenshot of you using your code. Send it to us however you can to be entered to win free seats. Uh, MedicGrow.com, code GROWCAST. Thank you to MedicGrow. All right, everyone, let's get into it with Wolfman. Thank you for listening and enjoy the show. Greetings, podcast listeners. You are now listening to GROWCAST. I am your host, Jordan River. I want to thank you for tuning in again today to the program. Before we get started, as always, I urge you to hit subscribe, catch every episode of GROWCAST. Get on our green list so you see everything we do. That's growcastpodcast.com slash list for free. And of course, check out our membership, The Order of Cultivation. The order beckons you at growcastpodcast.com slash membership. We are back here. We are in the middle of Grow Gear January. Loving this exploration of all things equipment and nutrients and so much more all surrounding the cannabis space. Today's episode, we're going a little bit higher in the food chain, a little bit more meta. We're talking about brands. We're talking about who owns who in this grow gear space. And we're talking about who you support with your dollar, where your money goes, which brands they go to. Like I said, whose shell corporation owns another, which country they're going to. So it's an interesting exploration today. And we are here to do this exploration with the best possible guest. We have Wolfman on the line. What's up, Wolfman? Oh, not much, man. Glorious, glorious day to be here. Yeah, it's a, a topic that I, I know a little bit about being in the industry for, uh, you know, a, a few years here and there. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, it's funny because for first time listeners, they're going to take you seriously. <laughs> Wolfman's been in the retail industry for, fuck, like, over a decade now, probably. He's our kind of retail expert. He's a grower as well. He actually just restarted his grow. We're going to get into that later in the show. But I almost feel the need to recap, Wolfman. You've been very present in membership. That's where we love you, hanging out with the members and everything. But it's good to have you back on the main podcast, talking to the listeners again. It has been a minute. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but Wolfman is our retail expert. What can I say? He's the perfect man for this guest. He's the perfect Wolfman for this show. Jesus, I'm, <laughs> I'm stoned, folks. So, so do forgive me. I'm tired. I'm stoned. But it's going to be a great episode nonetheless. Wolfman, buddy, are you ready to dive into this? You uh, Let's do it. You got a list of brands in front of you? I'm about to start firing some questions at you. Uh, let, let's let's see what I can pull out of the old uh, out of the old wolf brand. <laughs> yeah, it sounds good, man. Well, it was funny because I was in Hawaii. I was visiting family. They live out on Molokai, the little desert island in Hawaii. And Molokai, unfortunately, is where Monsanto has set up a lot of their. They have a headquarters there. They have a lot of research and development there. They basically kind of took over part of the island of Molokai and they conduct their testing. I was speaking with Malachi Kevin. Again, this was an episode in membership. You guys got to check it out. Malachi Kevin is a, is a Hawaiian grower. He's been there since like 1988, and he just loves Hawaii. He loves cannabis. And he was talking to me about Monsanto and all the crazy shit they're doing, how they're acquiring cannabis companies, like straight up trying to get into the flower production game. He was telling me about their, uh, this is no surprise, but, but their ability to manipulate genes and progeny to where they can have these terminator genes 
if they want their plant to not be pollinatable, that's perfectly fine. If they want their plants pollen to sterilize other people's plants, again, that terminator gene, that is a possibility. So cannabis pollen drifting onto your plantation and making everything sterile. So many different creepy applications of Monsanto in the cannabis world. What do you know about Monsanto and cannabis? What do you know about Monsanto buying up some of these grow gear companies? Not even talking about farming. We're talking about lights and fans. Um, what do you know about Monsanto and cannabis? I know a little bit. Um, I mean, you know, it seems like they're just taking a playbook out of what they've done in just the regular agricultural industry because, you know, they've copyrighted seeds. They, you know, they, you know, you talk about the Terminator genes and all these other things, right. you know, they sell seeds and pesticides to farmers and they've got it set up to where, you know, you have to buy stuff from them every year. You can't, you know, harvest your own seeds and, you know, do the things that farmers have been doing for hundreds of hundreds of years. Right. So they're, you know, they're, they're making it so that you have to rely on them. And you can't, you know, get back to the way that we should be farming, you know, sustainable farming, renewable farming, all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, they're just taking all of that and they're moving into the cannabis world because that's the next, you know, big <laughs> cash push, cow, big, the <laughs> next big. Ca yeah. Cash cow. Good. Good term. But, yeah, no, that makes perfect sense to me. I, I was not aware of their facility, you know, out in Hawaii because, I mean, out of sight, out of mind, you know. Yeah, they like to work on islands, I hear, in case something goes wrong. That's, literally, they like to they like to work in places where they can contain shit in case it goes bad. That's what I heard. No, that that's oh, that's smart because, I mean, you know, as things get out and dominate the world, you know, having them on an island, you can just, you know kill it with fire on the island and hopefully it doesn't spread <laughs> to everywhere else. Um, oh, but yeah, no, they, there was a big, I mean, I think they got into the cannabis or into our side of the industry. Oh, I don't even know how long ago now. What? Three, five years ago, three to five years, five, six, let's say five years ago. That's just a good, even number. But I know that they swooped on uh, sunlight supply was their one of their first acquisitions. They're the number one distributor or distribution manufacturer distributor in our industry. Mm -hmm. I think Sunlight started in the 90s. I mean, there's been other wholesale companies that have been around a lot longer. Uh, Hydro Farm, for example, has been around since the 70s. But Sunlight just has that dominant force. They've got, you know, DCs or distribution centers all across the country. I think they're, God, when I worked for them, there was... Uh, six or so, and they opened up a couple more. Um, I know that the the distribution center that I worked in in Humboldt they closed that one two three years ago because they just couldn't. You know, there's a a big group or a big component of the industry that doesn't really like Monsanto, which I can understand, and they don't want to give their money to Monsanto. Right. Even when I was a buyer at a store, I would you know I mean you you kind of have to buy and sell and use their products because just there's just so ingrained into the industry since they took over sunlight but myself along with a lot of customers and along with a lot of people in the industry just don't like to support them so they would find ways to support smaller companies or other you know other companies and whatnot and right there's even a a second or a, i would call them a tier b tier like C distribution company, um, they're an amazing company. I even got to work for them for a little bit called uh, Spare Time Supply in Northern California. They're a great company, great family owned company, just amazing. I don't know. I really like them. I have nothing but good things to say about them. Nice. They're the only, as far as I know, they're the only other bigger wholesale company that is able to still sell sunlight products. So like they just fill, fill this niche in Northern California that sunlight just couldn't crack. So they opened up their catalog to spare time so that spare time can still facilitate the sales of their products, but you're not initially or not giving your money directly, directly. to <laughs> the devil. You know, there's, there's sure. a middleman involved. So you can still get certain products and spare time just has pretty much, you know, Mendocino, Humboldt County on lockdown for distribution. Wow. That's um, pretty interesting. Not that, dude. you know, Sunlight and Hydro Farm and a few others don't still have distribution in those areas. It's just spare time has been there since the 70s and they just, you know, they're good at what they do. I gotcha. I gotcha. Um, so the distribution companies, that's very interesting because I was thinking more 
when we when we dove into brands, you know, I was thinking, what are they manufacturing? What are they making? But these are the distributors. They don't care. What's, oh yeah, right. You're, yeah, you're, yeah, I yeah. mean, these are these are the people who are getting the product to the grow stores. I mean, that's big money. That's all logistics. You don't need to know anything about growing. That actually makes more sense to me that they would get into kind of wholesale and, and distribution rather than like manufacturing high end horticultural lighting or something like that. By the way, you were right. I fact check you as you talk. Yeah. Sunlight Supply was founded in 1995. It was founded in Vancouver, Washington, uh. and eventually grew to, um, again, be be acquired by – I'm sorry. Is there one more shell company here? I, this, this is me asking you. I don't know if this is true. Hawthorne, the company Hawthorne. Oh, no. Is that the same thing? Yes. No, so Hawthorne is their – PC name, much like how they don't want to be called Monsanto, they're Scots because Scots has a less stigma. Right. So in our side of the industry, they are Hawthorne Garden Supply or something. Yeah, HPC, Hawthorne CC. Which I can, yep, you nailed yeah, it. Yeah, I can never, I'm horrible with aneurysm. I call them aneurysms, but I know they're <laughs> Acronym, acronyms. Yes. Um, I am horrible you get an with aneurysm. <laughs> you get, you get an yes. aneurysm trying to think of the acronym. I mean, there's a couple I know. But yeah, no, they they are Hawthorne, and that, that's Monsanto. Okay. But they do have manufacturing as well. They make lights, they make hoods, they make ballast. Oh, um, they do have a good chunk of their products are made in in America, but sure. then you know, tons and tons of stuff is also made in China. Yeah. You just can't compete with their manufacturing and those prices. But yeah, the big guys like Hawthorne, which used to be Sunlight, Hydro Farm, and then there's a few others that do do their own manufacturing as well as distribution. So they, you know, they can control it from the beginning to the end. And I kind of think that's, you know, Hawthorne, Monsanto, Scott's, you know, goal is they want to control everything from birth to death, much like they do in the the pharmaceutical and the yep. agricultural. So they got the seeds, they got everything to, you know, bring you into this world and then kill you and then heal you. And then, you know, <laughs> they'll more or less from birth to death, they want to control everything and take your money. So, but that's, that's just, you know, I agree that goes down in a whole nother path, but I couldn't agree more. <laughs> you know, it's crazy when you take a look at the Monsanto Bayer acquisition oh, that yeah. happened a couple of years ago. And again, it's poised to dominate the cannabis industry. The, the largest modern ag oligarchy basically teamed up with one of the largest pharmaceutical powers in this country. And, and again, we don't need to go down a whole nother path here, but just do yourself a favor and look into the history of Bayer and see how directly they're tied to the Third Reich and where they were created in Germany under the Third Reich and then kind of split and came here. So, again, I don't want to get off on a whole path here, but do yourself a favor and check out that very fascinating <laughs> history. Uh, not a conspiracy theory really happened. I'm a big fan of the conspiracy theories, too. There's many ogres involved in this. Yeah, it's kind of scary how they're entering our space. But you know what? It's going to happen. It's absolutely going to happen. That's why we got to get as many people growing their own. I believe that's how we fight back against this as we get as many people aware of their home grow laws and growing. But bringing it back around here, I'm on Hawthorne's website, hawthorngc.com. There's a page called Exclusive Brands. I don't know what that means. I don't think this is companies they own, and I don't think that they're exclusive because on this list are things that are sold elsewhere, like Blue Lab. I don't know what this means. But there's a whole list of, of companies here under their exclusive brands. Quest Dehumidifiers, Chikamasa Scissors, which are Japanese, Psycho Nutrients, which I'm a fan of. I don't know. Are these, are these companies that they – exclusive brands? I don't know what that means. Maybe they do own them. I, I, like, I have the same thought about that one myself because a lot – like exclusiv exclusivity, if I can pronounce that. <laughs> exclusivity, uh, yes. Makes you believe that they, they have contracts with those companies, that they're the sole distributors of those products. But like you just mentioned, a lot of those products are not solely distributed by right. um, Hawthorne, like Blue Lab, Chickamasa, and whatnot. Chickamasa is like a lot of these companies are brought in by a, a smaller company because they have the contract with the manufacturer. Uh, and then Hawthorne just they say that, you know, because they are the the biggest wholesaler and they, you know, a lot of buyers or stores they'll look at these lists like, oh, cool, I can get everything from them. They're gonna have the best price because it's exclusive to them. They don't you know, do their due diligence and check other suppliers. Right. But then also these big companies will give you, you know, certain deals on the back end or whatnot. So you can, you know, there's stores that are solely Hawthorne stores. There are stores that are solely Hydro Farm stores. It all, there's many, that's a whole different 
conversation. But yeah, no, Chickamasa is brought in by a much smaller distribution company. Blue Lab is Blue Lab, and you can get Blue Lab from right. a bunch of other means. companies. Um, but I know that also recently, not you know, just a step away from Hawthorne mm-hmm. for one quick second, uh, Hydro Farm, you know, was a they were the number two distribution company in the industry forever. They were a privately owned entity till maybe a year or so ago. I forget which, but they went public because they were they weren't doing so hot privately. So now they're a publicly traded. Uh, I don't know what the right acronym is, but once they became public, they had all this extra money to play with, <laughs> and they started acquiring other companies. Like I know, uh, Heavy Sixteen went to Hydro Farm. Humble Wholesale, I believe, sold out to or I think they're still distributing. No, actually, I don't think they do anything. They're pushing everybody to Hydro Farm. So like Humboldt, uh, excuse me, House and Garden um, and a bunch of other products that were through Humboldt Wholesale are now being sold through Hydro Farm. Wow. And I want to say that those products are now being pulled from uh, Hawthorne. So Hawthorne can't sell them because they did that same thing to certain brands that they possessed sure. they took them away from other companies Jeez, man it's a whole war behind the scenes yeah. this is exactly why i wanted to do this episode as the grower you're just going in and g- grabbing the bottle of nutrients <laughs> yeah but there's a whole there's a whole war that goes on behind the scenes here a whole industry literally yeah. it's an unseen layer yeah no it's, it's good to do the research and then you know knowing other things like uh when monsanto or hawthorne acquired was acquiring uh companies and products they picked up Gavita, or they own, I think they own most of Gavita, or oh, is that right? All of Gavita can filters, I believe, is uh, was uh, acquired by Hawthorne. Um, Botanicare, GH were all swooped up. So Botanicare Whoa. was out in Arizona, I believe they were in Chandler, if I remember right, and that's where all their their liquids and their plastics were being produced. And then a couple of years ago, there was a, a nutrient shortage for a little bit. And one reason was because they shut down nut- uh, Botanicare nutrient production in Arizona and moved it to the Bay Area at the GH facility. So all of the Botanicare nutrients and the general hydroponics nutrients are being made and produced in the GH facility in, I want to say, Sebastopol, California. Jesus Christ, dude, you know so, so much. It took them a little bit to get their shit together, but they're. They're doing a little bit better now, but still, I think that, you know, we're going to have some issues with inputs. So there's still going to be some shortages in the coming years, but I think they finally got their heads out of their asses and they're producing a good amount of nutrients again. Wow, dude, that what you just said actually led me to a different page on Hawthorne's website. And I found the list of companies they own. They're called signature brands and they have everything. There you go. They have everything you said. The first four are Gavita, uh, General Hydro, Botanicare and CanFan. So these are the companies that they've acquired. It's signature brands under Hawthorne GC. And before I go through this list and start giving reviews of these products, which again, were acquired by Monsanto, they weren't created by them. I do want to say this isn't to make anyone feel bad. This isn't to blow up your grow or even tell you what to buy. It is only to make you more aware. Maybe you don't care who you buy from. Maybe you don't. Maybe you're pro Monsanto or maybe you're like me and you realize that if you're doing well with Botanicare nutrients and you're growing medicine that's helping you. Don't switch unless you hate Monsanto. You buying those nutrients is just a drop in the bucket. Uh, obviously, a lot of people want to make, want to do their part, make a difference, and um, vote with their dollar. But again, this isn't to just trash anybody. That, you know what I mean? If if you're growing well with these companies, I'm not telling you you're a piece of crap or anything like that. I just know <laughs> I get a lot of. You know what I mean? Like I want to be clear on my, on my stance here. I am here to help growers. Yeah, no, we're we're here to if we're to educate and share yeah. the things that we've learned and whatnot over the years um, and to help the customer, the listener, the grower make the most educated choice for their own personal garden, their own personal life that we can. And I I tell people this in the stores all the time, like, you know, um, I'm not here to push you in one direction or another. I'm here to share and um, educate so that you can make your own decision. I'm not here to tell you, no, this is the way, do this, do this, do this. No, like that's, you know, then you're going to come back and yell at me when you, <laughs> when things go to shit because I told you the wrong things. Like, no, I'm here to help you make the decisions for your own life. hundred percent. Or not even tell you the wrong things. You tell them something that works, but not in their specific situation because so many exactly. are unique. 
You're right. You're totally right. So again, just want to be clear. Um, there were a lot of members asking for this content. So we're going to go through uh, this list of companies right now. We might as well go down, go down the line. It is long. We will be right back with Wolfman. But before that, the Foop, everybody. Go to foopcana.com and use code GROWCAST420 to save. Foop Nutrients, they have their nutrient line, of course, certified organic. I don't know of uh, many of those bottled nutrient lines that have gone through the hassle of certification. Foop has done it. It's a four-part line, and it's all fully USDA organic certified. Uh, that's what attracted to me in the, to them in the first place. They've, they're great in a soil system. Uh, the terps on the product that you grow will be really, really great with the Foop. But really what's turned me on to them even more has been their mist. This is a full spectrum foliar product. I've talked about it before, but they also add a bunch of stuff in it. It's not just the Foop base, the nutrition that's in the Foop. That is definitely what is the uh, base constituent, but it also has aloe extract. It's got peppermint in it. It's got additional beneficial microbes in there. So it's got a lot of goodies locked in there. And uh, the Foop Mist is ready to spray when you get it. That's the other cool thing about it. You just plug in the little spray bottle, give it a blast. I think you can really get a head start with young plants with this stuff, but don't saturate your seedlings all the way. That's how powerful this stuff is. Give it one spray and then give it some time. Once your plants are bigger, you can saturate it more. But the Foop Mist, go and try it if you haven't tried it yet. That's a great way to get turned on to the Foop is their mist and or their clone gel. Find it at foopcanna.com. Code GROWCAST420 to save some bucks. Thank you to the Foop. All right, let's get back to it with Wolfman. So we're going to go through uh, this list of companies right now. We might as well go down, go down the line. It is long. Again, these are signature brands on the Hawthorne page. I can only assume these are companies that they own. I shouldn't just say that. But again, the ones that you named that you know they acquired for a fact are all at the top of this list. And there's a few dozen more. Um, Gavita Lighting, General Hydroponics Nutrients, Botanicare Nutrients, Can Fans, Sun System Ballast, as you said, Hurricane Fans. Interesting. Mother Earth. Titan Control, Hydrologic, uh, Rhizoflora, Grow Pro, Sunblaze, and Solar Flare are both owned by Hawthorne. Growers Edge, Eco Plus, all those pumps, all those pumps. Harvest Pro, Fast Fit, Measure Master, Super Sprouter. Haven't heard of some of these. A lot of those are actually just house brands that they keep renaming over the years because, like, Eco Plus, oh no, it always was Eco Plus, then it became something else. So they like they rebrand themselves. Hmm. I'd say like a third of those names you just rattled off are were sunlight brands to begin with. So like I'd oh. say like a third or even half of that could have just been like sunlight supply. Not acquisitions, but came with the original sun. They they were manufacturing some things. Now they've grouped them into a family here. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because a okay. lot of that stuff it was sunlight to begin with. Okay, that is super interesting. Harvest Keeper, Alchemist. Par Pro, haven't heard of that one either. Grow Lab, Galaxy, Sun Grip. Sun Grip, are those the ratchets? Sun Grips are the ratchety things. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, they own the weirdest stuff. Ultra Sun, Spectralux, Ideal Air, Hydro Flow, almost done here. Sun Hut, Vermicorp, Rainmaker, Sheer Perfection, Sun Film, Grow Vision, and finally Sure Test. It looks like they put their big boys up at the top with those initial ones, Gavita, GH, Botanicare, CanFan. Yeah, yeah, those I know for sure weren't theirs to begin with, but yeah, a lot of those secondaries, uh, smaller ones and whatnot are all of their their house brands. That's good to know. Really, really interesting shit, man. This is crazy to look at this list. I mean, Gavita, they make nice high-end bars. I've heard people say, you know, they don't dim below 40% without the controller. I've heard some people, you know, like kind of hit or miss, but they're the they're the... They're the high-end efficiency bar, so they've got that covered. Um, Botanicare, I know some people who do very, very well with Botanicare. They've got the nutrient system covered down. Can fans are fine. They're like the old-style fans. You know, they don't, they don't stack up to things like AC Infinity, but it's like, a, it's like an old, established ventilation company. It's just crazy how they have all their yeah. boxes checked. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and then there's even um, rumblings in the industry, and I don't know if this is just in my mind or whatnot, but there, there's a retail chain, I guess, that emerged in the last few years that they are going around, and there's a couple of them, actually. There's been two or three over the years 
um, that are buying up a bunch of smaller stores. So they're trying to have like a national chain of stores. And the theory that some of us have is that they're just trying to make themselves extremely, I don't know what the right verb is, pretty uh, attractive. There we go. That's the right one. Um, to Monsanto, so or to, to Hawthorne, so that when it comes time to where they really want that monopoly, they can just come in and be like, oh, we'll buy this retail outfit. So they control everything from manufacturing to distribution. So they need to just you're buying things off yourself over and over again. So you're just making all this money in house and you don't have to share it with anybody, you know, from in essence, from birth to death. Yeah. I don't know when that's going to happen, but I know that one of the companies, um, a lot of the people that didn't make the round of cuts when they fired a bunch of people, because when Hawthorne came through sunlight, they let tons and tons of people go. Like you do when you acquire companies, you get rid of the the big, uh, line items and you put in people that cost far less they don't really know what they're doing so true and then those people go other places and they know the model they know how things work so they're just making other companies attractive so that they can sell out to the bigger fish and you know they can make money on their end jesus dude that is fucking mind-blowing you know something i gotta shout out i met with a cultivator from one of the large companies in Illinois. Illinois only has 22 cultivators. The licensing lottery was insane. It basically paved the way for only mega cannabis corporations, Wolfman. So like, that's all we have here. I've been secretly meeting with a mole on the inside of one of these companies <laughs> who's a cultivator there. And, uh, and it just baffles me when they tell me the behind the scenes stuff, when they talk about these big cannabis companies and their history, it's exactly what you just said. You get it started, you get a, you get a f cultivation facility going, you get some legacy growers, you go legacy to legal at first, you train them up, you learn how to do everything, you get everything rolling. And then eventually when you go to expand, it's exactly what you said. You kill all the big line items, you fire all the expensive cultivators that you were paying, all the head growers, you fucking fire all of them, you clean house, you bring in a bunch of $15 per hour people, all the instructions are written down. Your product goes to shit, by the way. A lot of these dispensary products are, I mean, none of them are as good as homegrown. Even the most mediocre homegrown outdoes the Illinois Dispo Buds. But it was just kind of bringing me back to that lunch that I had with that individual when you described that process, because that is the corporate expansion model. When your biggest targets, when your biggest goals, when your biggest values are dominating a market share and maximizing profits, that's the type of strategy you take. That's the type of product you produce. And uh, that's the type of sympathy you get from the customer. You know what I mean? You, you take a draconian approach. You produce a shit product. And the producer thinks that you're fucking Mon Satan, as Molokai Kevin was calling them. You know what I mean? So yeah. it just kind of blew my mind there when you were describing, you, you were repeating what this individual had said when I was, when I was talking to them about the, the dirty inner workings of corporate cannabis. Yeah, that, that's just corporate life. It doesn't have to be in our industry. That's just that's right. just corporate life. Right. Yeah. They're just now bringing it to uh, to the cannabis industry, which has traditionally had its its own very insular community, its own very insular structure of ethics and retribution and things like that. So it's just it's it's very shocking to have those two things collide. Yeah. Well, you know, when when things are more commonly accepted or like publicly accepted you know it's it's okay now that they can you know swoop on these things and they can do these for years upon years upon years i heard rumblings of you know the cigarette companies are possess thousands of acres in like Soham and mendocino just waiting for when weed is legal so that they can just you know turn key and they already can produce tons and tons of weed and then um also, years ago, I don't know how completely true this is, but a, a friend of mine, he sells, um, like, he has a metal building company. So, you know, goes around and sells huge metal buildings to people. And he was out servicing a customer of his. And this guy was, like, doing um, industrial dehydrators. So, like, when you put vegetables in these things for, like, soups and, like, instant soups and ramens and all those things, he was checking out the facility and then the guy was like, here, come here, check this out. Took him to another building that was the same size as the building he was in. It was a gargantuan building. And all the machines were just sitting there quiet, just, you know, still nothing's going on. He's like, oh, what's going on? Are these all broken? He's like, no, everything here is perfect. This is all owned by 
the cigarette company and they're just waiting for when it's legal so that they can instantly dry and cure all the, the pot so they can make Marlboro greens or whatever. Wow. I don't know if that's necessarily accurate, but that's been a rumbling for, you know, long, long time that I've been aware of. You know, once things are publicly accepted, you know, these they do big corporations, because yeah. it's, it's not a really about what's right and wrong. It's all about the dollar. So once it's okay to make the money off of these things, they will do it because they just want money like most people. Right. I mean, but that's fine. The problem is when you put that first, my my philosophy and I'm no fucking I'm no genius, but I like it better than theirs. You got to create value. Yeah. You got to you got to have passion for a product and you got to provide value for another human being. That's how I was taught that wealth was created. You know what I mean? Uh, the, in a free market, you know, we, we like to point at America mm-hmm. like a free market. It is not. It's it's crony capitalism. That's and that's what's entering the cannabis space, man. That is literally what is entering the cannabis space is is crony capitalism, where the regulators set it up so that just a few people are allowed to play, and it's the same few people, and there is no competition because it's a uh, you know it's all price fixed and things like that. It's a monopoly. It's actually the uh, the biggest enemy, the arch nemesis of a free market is a monopoly. And that's kind of what you get in a weird roundabout way with this crony capitalism again. And again, I'm not trying to make a political stance here. I'm just saying that's what I observe. And I, I would love it if more people were like, how can I help patients? And the money will come provide value for people, provide a service. They just want to dominate a market share so they can be lazy, produce shit weed. The dispo weed around here is um, flash dried. I don't know how they do it. I don't know if they're using a freeze dryer or just a low RH, higher humidity type dry, but it's all shit because they need to get it out the door ASAP and they take weed that probably is pretty good off of the bud and they buck it down into tiny buds. They over dry it and they sell it to you for $60 an eighth recreationally, sometimes more and it's garbage. So that's what you get when, when there is no real free market competition. Yeah, no, it makes me think a good buddy of mine, I get, I get bees from him from down in Humboldt um, and they're, they're better than most of the distribution, the uh, dispensary weed I see up here, even, you know, the stuff that I see people grow. I mean, the granted, there is good weed up here in Oregon. There are a lot of people that are doing amazing things. But yeah, the bee, the bee nuggets that my buddy gives me are some of the best that I've seen here. <laughs> That's which killer, is kind of funny. Well, I mean, it, there's yeah. always going to be there's no situation where no one's feelings get hurt. Right. Like, let's go to the other side of the spectrum, which is Oklahoma, where anybody is allowed to play twenty five hundred bucks to play. You know, it creates new problems. It creates a glut in the market. It creates a lot of failed businesses. But at the end of the day, it is more of a meritocracy. So I don't know, man. It, it's pretty insane that we have to think about these things now. Yeah. Uh, when you go to buy your horticultural lighting, who am I supporting? Am I supporting Monsanto? That's pretty wild. It is a reality. I'm trying to think of if maybe we could shout out some, some USA-based brands. Now, like you said, growers want it both ways. They get pissed because Mars Hydro is selling a cheaper version of that thing online, right? But they're they're manufactured and operated from China. Mars Hydro, Vivosun. That's why those companies are able to produce such cheap products. They're usually a little bit lower quality, but not much, these Chinese products. Back in the day, the biggest problem with them was their customer service. They would have shitty customer service. And I think they've really upped their game on that, too. They'll just replace your shit a lot of the time. I try to go for the higher end brands just because with with those brands, you are kind of getting. Listen, let's be honest. They take our technology or they take technology from other countries, other companies, and they reproduce it at a fraction of the cost. They do not have their own team of engineers coming up with the next bar style light. They simply order one after our team from Photon Tech develops one. They reverse engineer it and they make it cheaper. God bless them. I, I believe there's room for everybody. Now, back to what I was saying, the American made companies, growers want it both ways. They want the cheap stuff. So you're, you're virtually never going to find something that's made in America. I can't even really think of a brand. What I do know of are a lot of brands that are based in America, engineered in America, manufactured overseas. Brands like AC Infinity, brands like I'm assuming Rain Science Grow Bag, they're USA based. They might be USA manufactured. I could be wrong about, about that. But most of these companies, like I'm saying, Wolfman, and correct me if I'm wrong. They're American based, but they usually have overseas help uh, as the free market usually dictates when it comes to manufacturing. Yeah. And don't, don't forget about assembled in America. Yes. Because <laughs> there's always that. That is another thing. Yeah. You got to put it together, right? So yeah. you can assemble it in America. 
But um, uh, yeah, you mentioned a couple of distributors. Are there any other USA brands that like leap off of your mind? Um, I mean, the one that always comes to my mind would be Smart Pots because they, I know that they are a made in America. That's right. Started in America. I think they're in Ohio. They're in, uh, they're in um, Kansas City. They're in Kansas Kansas, City, uh, Kansas, I think. Gotcha. Yeah, I know somewhere in somewhere in middle America, um, but I know that they they were one of the first to do fabric pots because they I want to say they were doing fabrics for like trees and stuff in the beginning. And then they took that technology and made smaller and smaller fabric pots. And that's a virgin material. It's, you know, completely fresh and new and it's made right here. And then a lot of people, you know, they take that and then they, you know, they go to China and find someone to make it for them cheaper. And I'd say nine out of 10 of the other fabric pots out there. Uh, made with recycled fabric so you never really know what's going to be in there there might be rayon there might be heavy metals but you're going to get them for pennies on the dollar and i mean i myself have used many different grow bags over the year or excuse me fabric pots over the years i still kind of like doing the smart pots but you know if you can get a a geopod or you know something else i think there's dirt pots and there's a spring pot like everybody's getting on board you know everybody just finds something and just copies it and tries to sell it <laughs> you know it comes down to brand loyalty it comes down to you know doing the doing the research doing the digging you know sometimes spending a little bit more money if you can or if you want to to buy that more expensive better made locally made product but in the end, you know, like sometimes you have to just go with grow bags, you know, just go cheap and dirty with plastic just because you don't have the money. Like I am doing that myself right now. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to see someone grow first, you know, first and foremost, but the recycled fabric was an interesting note, man. I had no fucking inclination to think about the fact that if you're getting an Amazon one again from overseas, probably from China, that is, and it's, it's just recycled plastic, you, uh, sorry, recycled fabric. You don't know what type of fabric they're using. Yeah. For that recycled fabric, that is kind of mind blowing, yeah. and it makes sense why smart pots are more expensive. Smart pots not a partner; they're a great choice for a fabric bag. I've always looked at them and gone, "Gee, why are they so expensive compared to the compared to the online ones?" You just totally nailed why, dude, because yeah. they're probably using high quality fabric where yeah. they know the source. Yeah, the other thing too is a lot of people will, will say smart pot. It's like the Kleenex thing. Yeah, Kleenex is a brand. But it realistically, it's a facial tissue. Right. But none of us call them. I need a. I need a facial tissue. It's like no, I need a Kleenex. So a lot of people, like over the years, I've had customers gonna be like, oh, I want, like I can get these way cheaper somewhere else. I'm like, well, is it a Smart Pot or is it a, a Grow Pro or pot, is it yeah. something else? You know? And they're like, oh no, it's a Grow Pro. I'm like, well, that's a Sunlight brand coming from China. That's obviously gonna be less expensive, and therefore I can't sell you a Smart Pot at the same price <laughs> as a Grow Pro. So it's, yeah. you know, it's apples to oranges, not apples to apples. I totally agree. Um, I've been on these mesh grow bags lately. I love the fabric pots. They're dope. I don't like how nasty they get after a few runs. I don't think they're good enough to just clean out. I end up throwing them away after a while. That's just me. Maybe other people have a good, better washing method. I've been into these mesh bags. Of course, our partner, Rain Science Grow Bags, Code Growcast. They're the shit, man. I know there's other companies like Radical Bags things like that. Have you tried a mesh bag? I know you just started growing again for the first time in years. We got to get you some rain science. Hey, rain science, hook up Wolfman. He's using plastic pots. Yeah. No, alert, I'd, alert. I'd, Someone tag rain science. I'd be, I'd be down to try. I did, when I was a sales guy, we did have radical bags in our arsenal, but I was at a, one of my accounts and uh, one of my buddies who actually I worked retail with and then I became a uh, sales rep and then he went and worked at a different shop but he was still one of my, he was still one of the employees at one of the, my accounts. So I still got to hang out with him and see him all the time. And they had radical bags. And he showed me something that was hilarious because um, they had a bunch of cocoa, uh, like cocoa pith, like fiber and whatnot in it, in a bag outside. And he was like, check this out. And he picked it up and started shaking it. And it was more or less like a cookie duster. So the holes were just a little too big. <laughs> so you got all this runoff and like all of your super fine particles would just come right through the bag. I was like, well, that's not good. Because then you're going to end up with, yeah, yeah you're going to, you're going to end up with a bunch of particulates and whatnot, you know, like in your reservoir, you know, clogging your lines and all that stuff. So, I mean, I, I really like the idea of recycle. You know, you, there's all this plastic is out there already. Let's recycle it and reuse it. You know, reduce, recycle, reuse, Captain Planet. <laughs> but heart. You know, the it's <laughs> the the holes are just a little too big. So I mean, I I still like the fabric pots, 
But again, like I'm in just really cheap plastic grow bags right now just because I was on a budget. Oh, um, I would shit. love to get back into the fabric pot or even try a rain science pot. But for me, you know, like five cents, seven cents a pot <laughs> was, I couldn't beat that for, you know, my low investment grow getting back into things because life gets expensive and I can't just put all my money into grow anymore. Dude, that's why we fucking do what we do right there. <laughs> you're walking the walk and you're talking the talk because that's what we say. Like, no one's going to grow just like you. I, I can't fathom these content creators or these IG growers who they get a partnership with a brand and they act like it's the only fucking brand on the planet, man. Oh, it's yeah. crazy. And, and, and to me, that goes against trying to educate growers because it, it's instantly skewing your opinion. If I partner with a light, I'm not going to only mention that light. I won't even allow exclusive partnerships. That's not something that I do. No, but but that's you. That's you know. There's all those big those big names out there, and they they'll partner up with a with a nutrient brand, and then like that nutrient brand gets really popular. And like I have a lot of buddies that have tried all of these new big fangled you know nutrient lines or yeah. lighting lines, and like it works. But then a lot of my buddies, you know, they get away from those things and go back to like what we know that works, and like. You know, I got a lot of buddies down in Humboldt that were doing Athena and doing, you know, all of the new the newfangled stuff. And a lot of them went back to just doing cutting edge because it's simple and easy and affordable. And it works amazing with Humboldt County water. It sure does. Um, I like both those brands, by the way. But I know exactly what you're saying. And my worst fear, Wolfman, is, you know, content creator A partners up with lighting brand B and it, it costs a thousand dollars for their smallest fixture. Someone goes and checks it out and says, I'm thinking about getting into growing. What light do you recommend? Oh, well, this is the only light in the world. Oh, I can't afford that. I guess I'm not growing. Oh, I can't afford that rain science grow bag. I guess I'm not growing. That's not cool. And so that's why we vibe and, and we do what we do, which is like, we got to get people growing, man. You want to talk products? We'll talk products. It's going to be a long conversation. It's not just going to be check out our partner. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I mean, on that note, um, side tangent, reverse tangent, like even way before, you know, fabric pots, there was guys like I remember going out on the hill when I was, you know, a youngster, um, certain learning things, you know, people were like the old the old timers were doing T post chicken wire and then, you know, a ground cover. And then that was their, you know, grow pot for outside. Wow. Because then you still get that air movement or that air uh, pruning, you know, drying sure. out whatnot. And then you don't have to buy a you know, a 200 gallon plastic pot for, you know, a hundred bucks. You can just get some chicken wire and that's going to keep all your dirt together anyway. Old school, man. So that's a good way to kind of end it, which is long before these brands, people were figuring it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? People were farming. Some, some people were growing some fire fucking weed long before all these bells and whistles. Yeah. Um, they help for sure. But, but you get it done. You get the fucking job done and you get growing. That's our thing. <laughs> yeah, Exactly. I love it, man. I, I feel like it's a good wrap up spot. We've got just a few minutes here. Usually we'd give plugs. Wolfman, you're not on IG. You are growing again. That's super exciting. We talk about it all the time in membership. If you're hearing this and you're like, what? Wolfman got started growing again. It's like yeah, we, we are in discord. We're doing Growcast TV weekly. Yes. Wolfman is growing again. He's crushing it. He's growing the peach quake. He's growing all sorts of stuff under a photon tech light. Really, really good shit, man. I'm uh, I'm impressed with your grow. Let me say that before we wrap it up. You're back in the game after like fucking five or six years or whatever, eight years. Nine. Uh, and you just instantly, nine years, you instantly throw down this run that just looks beautiful. So, so yeah. congratulations, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, you know, I definitely like, like everyone, you know, there's always things that I didn't do. There's laziness involved. There's, there's learning. There's a huge learning curve. This is my first time with a tent, first time with an LED, first time with organics. And I don't remember how long. So like, I'm definitely battling fungus gnats. I put my ducting through the second panel of my tent, so I can't actually unzip the three sides of the tent. So I'm gonna have to like, you know, pull a 180 so I can put the duct duct work through the the one panel that doesn't unzip, so that I can actually get around to the backside. Because there are a, there's a few plants that you know I did the first cleaning with, but you know there's still some water leaves on there that I haven't touched, and those plants are like up above my light. You know, I didn't prune up as nearly as high as I should have, but I'm also doing, well, I'm only doing two flavors, but doing two flavors I've never done before. So I'm going to have a, you know, a decent amount of larfy stuff myself, but you know, it's all just a personal grow and just getting back into it. And it's, you know, just a learning 
fun experience and you know it, it's good so as long as you're having fun that's all that really matters it's always well is what we try to say man you're kicking butt so that that is super cool i know what you're talking about though you got the one panel that is like it's not part of the assembly where you wrap it around the the one individual door in your tent and that's got a ventilator through it so if you put ducting through it you, you can't open it i know exactly what you're talking about that's a good tip yeah. to wrap up uh yeah, yeah. No, i, I yeah, I really like my AC Infinity tent, but if I had put a little bit more thought into it, I would have, you know, pulled a 180 so that I could actually unzip the three sides and not just the the one. Oh, I see. So you're in the AC Infinity tent, which doesn't have. I have, these tents are the best, by the way. But the the one thing that I would change about them, and I'm I, I'm going to tell this to Sydney on the next call, is that I would like that individual door. You're right. The AC Infinity tent unwraps on three sides, and if you put it through that one, I'm looking at it right now. You can only unwrap. Yeah the front that is true yeah that is true yeah i mean i i did go with the five by five and i'm in a four by four table so i do have four to six inches of scuttling room around the edge but I, like i have to unzip the bottom and the top of the zipper and kind of like weasel my way around things and i've got like two-thirds of the way around but there's like two or three plants in that far corner that is just just not happening so <laughs> you know it it is what it is, and uh, you know I'm learning, I'm having fun, and that's all that really matters. I love it. Well, the scuttle is better than the army crawl, so uh, well, yeah. Again, uh, <laughs> come on over to membership, guys, if you want to get in on the live streams, if you want to hang out with Wolfman in the Discord. I'm in voice chat. Uh, I'm in the Discord every day. I'm in voice chat all the time. Wolfman's in there. Growcastpodcast.com/slash/membership. Wolfman, thank you for taking the time today, man, and always helping the members. And my pleasure. You're a legend, brother. You're a straight up legend. Oh, it's a glorious, glorious feeling to have. I mean, I, uh, I, I've been in retail for a long time. I enjoy helping people, but being able to reach and help many more people across this great, great rock that we all call home is it's an even, even greater feeling. <laughs> okay, we got to let Wolfman uh, get to the get to the job. That's all for today. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. I appreciate you at Growcast on Instagram. Get on our mailing list growcastpodcast.com slash list that'll keep you up to date that'll give you prizes growcastpodcast.com slash action just to see all our links everything we're doing and of course slash membership to join the order of cultivation we await you that's all for today this is wolfman and jordan river signing off saying to you growers and grow smarter That's our show for today, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode. Before we wrap it up, Next Level Indoor Garden Supply in Rockford, Illinois. That's right. You've heard me talk about them before. It's where we do our classes. If you're in the Illinois area, go out and see Hannah and Tony. It's the best garden center around here. I drive extra far just to go and visit them. They care about growers. They get in the products that people want, that work. And uh, we do our classes there as well. We just did one two days ago at the time of this episode's dropping. And you can go in there and sign up to do a class. If you know someone who's getting started in the area and you need to refer them, send them on over to Next Level Garden Supply. They got the sign-up sheet right in there. And again, Hannah and Tony are for the growing community. That's why they're putting on these classes. They're five bucks per person. And then we give the money to a local animal shelter. Really incredible what Next Level Indoor Garden Supply is doing. Again, out in Rockford, Illinois, we love them. You'll love them. Go and give them a try. You'll never go to any other store in the area, folks. Next Level Indoor Garden Supply. All right, everyone, stay tuned. We got a ton of stuff going on. I'm in Oklahoma in just a few short days. There's a meetup in Oklahoma on the 21st. Growcastpodcast.com slash green list to stay up to date on everything that we're doing travel-wise. Next month, I'm in Southern California. April, we have the Cultivators Cup. Okay, we'll see you next time. Whew. Thanks for subscribing, everybody. I appreciate every single download, and I look forward to helping you perfect your garden all throughout 2022. See you next time, everyone. Bye-bye.